And this is the first meeting of the Greenfield School Committee in the year of 2020. It's very exciting. We have a lot of new faces and a lot of excited people to get to work. Um, tonight I am just momentarily starting us off. Um, it is January 8th, 2020, and it is, I already said this, I'm just going to say it for the record, 634. We are at the John Zahn Community Center, and we are being recorded by the GCTV. Anybody else recording tonight? Um, Blanking on your name from the recorder. Melina Bordeaux from the recorder is recording us this evening. And I am going to um, ask for a motion to waive the rules of procedure so we can get right into our reorganization this evening. And that means I'm going to turn it, I believe um, Amy Priety moved it and Susan Ekstrom seconded it. It was kind of quiet over there. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Harper to start us off with reorganizing our committee. Thank you and welcome to our new members. Uh, policy BDA of the school committee describes the school committee organizational meeting and states that the superintendent will accept nominations from the floor for the office of chairperson. So at this time I will entertain uh, nominations for the office of chair. Member Johnson. I nominate Member Ekstrom. Member Ekstrom has been nominated. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mayor Wiedengartner. I am, uh, nominating Amy Priety. Okay. There's a nomination for Member Priety. Is there a second? Second. Also seconded by Mayor Wiedegartner. Are there any other nominations? Member Hollins. I'd like to nominate Roxanne Wittegardner. I decline. <laughs> I'm going to assume there's no second for that. <laughs> okay, motion fails for lack of second and also being declined by the nominee. Are there any other nominations? <laughs> okay, seeing no further nominations, uh, I believe the appropriate step at this point is to uh, vote for the two nominees. Um, we'll begin in order of the nomination. Uh, would you please vote now if you uh, would like to wish for Member Ekstrom as chair? Is that a clarification? Oh, does anyone wish to discuss or hear from the candidates? I apologize. Would the candidates like to speak or? second term and what I've learned in the past two years is that you really don't know how school committee works until you've had a year or a year and a half or two years underneath your belt um, and so I bring that experience to the table and also I'm really excited about our new committee and I'm really interested in heralding things forward and looking forward to working with everyone I'm really excited so thank you Hi, everyone. Uh, I am very interested in being chair. I'm also really appreciative that Member Ekstrom is also interested in being chair. I think it's important anytime you vote to have a choice. Uh, and I have a long experience with uh, organizational governance. I run the governance structure and have for four years now at Greenfield Community College, where I work. Uh, I'm very interested in creating a school committee that is accessible to the public, uh, that stays on task, and that has well-defined uh, decision-making. And I think I can improve upon some of what has um, transpired in, in recent years. And uh, for those reasons, I, I would like to, be, like to have your vote for chair. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Member Hollins.
one reason I'm optimistic about our school committee is that uh, although I don't know everyone personally, I think we have a really focused, intelligent uh, membership. But I would have to say honestly, uh, having had over 40 years experience in school specific to public school governance, I've never uh, personally experienced uh, someone coming in to chair the a multi-million dollar school system having never served even for a day on the committee. Uh, sc school governance is really very specific, otherwise there wouldn't be so many degrees just in that field. Uh, we're the third, second or third largest employer in the area. I believe we have maybe, give, it doesn't matter, we use the largest amount of resources uh, there's a lot of specific training related to education. I was just looking at the commissioner's evaluation, you know, 30% is on whether children are learning. That's not really political, it's understanding our curriculum and the frameworks and how it works together. Um, there's a certain amount that's operations, how we get along, how we make decisions, how we keep records, but there's an awful lot to an education institution and plus we have stuff in process that's really complicated. So as long as I've been in school governance, and maybe it's a long time, it's really important that people uh, first get an understanding of the school system, what's, what it's, what's going on. Uh, I think as soon as we get into the first non-public session, people are gonna find we have a lot of really busy, important, detailed things to do. I think the learning curve would just be too great for someone new, no matter how bright and talented. So um, I, I think we should have someone with some ex prior experience. That's my comment. Thank you, Member Hollins. Are there any other members that wish to comment? I would simply like to say that um, I, I don't disagree with uh, Susan, however, I have to also consider that um, we do have a choice here, and the current can the other candidate, both candidates are great. I think school committee experience is very important, but at the same time, members come to the committee with different skills. And I have every um, reason to believe that uh, uh, Amy Proetti is someone who's competent to get up to speed very, very fast and has demonstrated that in many ways in my conversations with her um, previously, not recently, but previously about what her goals for the, for the schools and for the school committee are. So I would like to um, encourage each member to consider each person um, individually as opposed to um, whether they've had the experience or not. I've never been mayor before, but here I sit. Uh, so um, I think that it's important to uh, recognize that we're all here because we care about schools and we care about the children, we care about Greenfield. And I don't doubt for a moment that either person does, um, either person running for chair. So having been a chair of a school committee, it's an awesome job, not awesome in a good way, awesome in a big way. <laughs> so whichever one of you becomes chair, um, I'm happy to give you what I know in terms of knowledge, but but just uh, whichever one of you becomes chair, you have a big job to do. And neither one of you probably know exactly what that means. So uh, good luck to both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Member Johnson? Uh, I'd like to speak to the reasons why I nominated Member Ekstrom. Um, I think that you do have experience and you also have a lot of caring um, about the students in the schools. Um, special experience as a parent of someone with special needs and someone who 
I think under, can see the details of the, the finances, keeps a close eye on our warrants, um, and who listens uh, to all of the other members on the committee um, and has relationships with each one. And I think that your ability to kind of value relationship building and, and seeing things from everyone's different perspective has been a real asset to our committee, and I think it would serve you well um, as chair. And um, and I, th I also do think the experience makes a difference. I know the, the mayor um, spoke of her experience on the school committee, you know, in in describing her qualifications to be mayor, and, and I, I also think experience on the school committee is a good qualification to have to be the chair of the school committee. So I, I, I look forward to raising my hand again for you tonight. Thank you. Is there any further deliberation? Okay, seeing none, our policy follows on to say the chairperson will be elected by a majority roll call vote of the members present and voting. So at this time, I'm going to call members by name for a roll call vote. Um, if it's all right with everyone, I'll begin to my right and move. Nomination on the floor is for Susan Ekstrom. The first nomination that was received on the floor was for Susan Ekstrom. And that's what the vote is currently? I believe that um, members could vote uh, for their candidate of choice. Is that acceptable? Does anyone know? Who's our parliamentary? That's a voice vote then? Yeah, okay. Is it acceptable to the members to do a roll call vote with each member stating of the two nominees their selection? Or would you prefer to do each nominee individually? Let's do each in individually. Okay, we're going to begin with the first nomination, which was for member Ekstrom, and we'll do a roll call vote, and you can vote yes if you're voting to support this candidate for chair, or a no vote means that you are not casting your ballot for this particular candidate for chair. Okay? We'll begin with uh, Member Karen. No. Member Hollins? Yes. Member Johnson? Yes. Member Ekstrom? Yes. Member ProReady? No. Member Wall? No. And Member Weida Gardner? Mayor? No. Uh, the no's have it. We will now cast a roll call vote for the second candidate that was nominated. So this uh, second vote will be for the nomination of member Priority as the chair. We'll again begin to my right with a roll call vote. A yes vote is in favor. A no vote is against. Member Karen? Yes. Member Hollins? No. Member Johnson? No. Member Ekstrom? No. Member Priority? Yes. Member Wall? Yes. Mm, member Mayor is what I keep wanting to say. So it's on my list. <laughs> Roxanne or Weedy Gartner will do. Um, yes. So we have four yeses and three noes on that last vote. So the yeses would have it. Yes. Sorry, Member, Wall Member Wall voted yes. Uh, so by majority vote of the committee, the chair has been uh, nominated and selected as Amy Priority. So I will now turn the chairing of the rest of the meeting over to Chair Priority. And thank, thank you, you to both candidates for expressing your interest. It's an awful lot of work, and I look forward to uh, working with all of you, but in particular working with the chair because of the nature of the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you particularly to Susan Ekstrom for stepping up. I seriously appreciate it. I do think um, the best news is that no one but me will have to say Proyetti. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do believe we now need to move on to the nominations for vice chair. Is that correct? Is that the next order of business? The new chairperson will pre preside upon election calling for the election of a vice chairperson and secretary <laughs> in order. <laughs> the procedure used will be the same as that for electing the chairperson. There we go. Okay, so I open nominations for the vice chair of school committee. Mayor Rita Gartner. I nominate Susan Ekstrom. Second. 
There's a nomination for Susan Ekstrom with a second by Member Wall. Any other nominations for Vice Chair? I would like to nominate Katie Karen. Second. There's a nomination for Member Karen with a second by Member Johnson. Any other nominations for Vice Chair? So I would ask that someone, uh, we can move to discuss, I think is the, what makes the most sense, discuss the nomination. People have thoughts, comments. The uh, two nominees would like to make a statement. Um, I am ex would be excited to continue on. Um, I think that having uh, someone with experience is going to be great to support someone who doesn't have experience. But I think Susan is not a great nomination acceptance speech, but would also do a great job. So <laughs> um, I, I'm excited to keep doing what I've been doing. Um, I have thoughts that someday being chair would be fun, but I would like a little more time as a vice chair to figure that out. Any discussion before we vote? Member Hollins. Um, I think both people would be fine as vice chair. The vice chair role is really to be the chair when the chair isn't present. So unless the school committee assigns the vice chair to head up something in particular, it's really a backup position. But I hope in our officers that we have um, some legacy experience with the new chair. I think you'll need that. So I think either candidate would do well. Any other discussion or comment? Hearing none, we can vote in the same manner that we voted for uh, the chair. And we'll start with, uh, on my left, with uh, Mayor Wiedegartner. Uh, we'll vote first for the first nominee, which was Susan Ekstrom. And uh, a yes vote indicates you're voting for that person as vice chair. A no vote indicates you are not. Yes. Member Wall? Yes. Member Ekstrom? Yes. Member Johnson? No. Member Hollins? Yes. Member Karen? Yes. <laughs> So we don't need to go back to my vote. <laughs> Based on those votes, uh, Member Ekstrom carries the, the vote tally with five votes and will be the vice chair of school committee. Congratulations. Okay. Secretary, thank you. We now will follow the same process, opening nominations for secretary of school committee. Member Ekstrom. I would like to nominate Member Johnson. Second. That was a nomination by Member Ekstrom for Member Johnson for secretary with a second by Member Karen. Any other nominations for secretary? Hearing none, I think we can just do a voice vote to nominate Member Johnson as secretary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that carries and Member Johnson is our new secretary. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. All that settled, do we go back up to do public comment? Oh, 
Does the secretary do the roll? We didn't do the official roll call at the beginning. That's correct. And does the secretary do the roll call? Secretary does do the roll secretary call. Secretary Johnson, can you do the roll call for us? Yes, belated roll call for tonight's meeting. Mayor Wiedegardner? Here. Member Wall? Here. Member Proietti? Here. That was excellent, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I just had a little on the job training. <laughs> Member Ekstrom? Here. Member Hollins? Here. Member Karen? Here. Member Johnson, I am here. Full house tonight. Excellent. Thank you. And now we move into public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment this evening? Okay, doing this from memory, you need to state your name and your address, and you have three minutes. And do we have someone who times it, or do I do that? I can time it in my role as secretary. secretary does it. <clears throat> nice, there we go. Please go Hi. ahead. My name is Paul DeMarco. I'm with the Massachusetts Teachers Association. I live in Shutesbury, 78 West Pelham Road. Um, I just wanted to remind the school committee that the previous school committee, uh, well, congratulate the newly elected officers, um, but the previous school committee um, ratified a contract for the Unit C, PARAs, and um, other specialists. And you have a number of, um, great number of PARAs who are working for less than minimum wage in this town. And we hope that the school committee will support us to try to get the funding from the city for this contract. We don't want to see it come out of the special ed fund, but we do want to see the contract funded. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment this evening? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll go on to the committee reports. My chairperson report is it's Priyetti. <laughs> <laughs> Priyetti. I've known you 14 years. That's the place. Do we have a report from the superintendent? <laughs> Uh, yes, I wanted to begin again by welcoming all of you in, in your new roles in particular. I think I will echo the sentiments earlier that uh, all of those here are quite committed to the students of Greenfield and to the community, and that the relationship with the community and the school committee is an important one, so I look forward to continuing my work with you. Um, a couple of brief updates include uh, the upcoming Dr. Martin Luther King Day on January 20th. We will have no school, followed by an in-service day on January 24th. For all of you at home looking forward to the new school calendar, I do expect that now that members are sworn in tonight, that next month's business will include approving next year's school calendar um, so we can begin the work uh, for families that are planning ahead for next year. I do have some sad news this evening, and I would like to take a moment to mark the passing of a beloved member of the Greenfield community. Um, Mr. Richard Hawkins, a longtime custodian with the schools, passed this morning. He worked in a number of our buildings, including the Academy of Early Learning, I'm sorry, the high school, many of our schools as a floater. Um, was just a very kind and compassionate person to everyone that knew him. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with his family and the community, and uh, we ask that as folks are speaking with students in our schools that they keep in mind that there are many young children that are quite attached to him as well, and to speak about it in a developmentally appropriate way. And we've told all of our principals and custodians in advance as well so that that, that message can be relayed appropriately. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry. Um, the further updates that I have, I'll defer as the agenda items come up throughout the evening. I have other comments on the agenda items, but we'll save further remarks for then. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Harper. Any subcommittee reports? Um, so yesterday we had a meeting of the Health and Safety Facilities Subcommittee. Um, we had a good meeting, lots of presentations from our educators. Uh, we talked a lot 
about our Green River School and the update on the heating and that the town council has said that until we give them an updated proposal, they will not vote a heating system for us. So we look forward to that coming forward to us again um, and the, the struggle of that situation. Um, for those who aren't familiar that we um, accepted a proposed program for that building approximately a year and a half ago at this point, um, but then we're asked to we couldn't do anything with it until we had a heating system. And so we keep getting this pushback that we need a better program to know if we can have a system. And we can't come up with a really fully thought out program until we know when we can get in and how we can get in and all of that. So it's kind of a back and forth that's been happening. Um, yeah. Thank you, Member Karen from the Health and Safety Committee. Any other? Oh, uh, policy is hoping to meet January 13th. Um, that hasn't been set all the way in stone yet. We're still working on that. Um, it sort of brings up the question of our subcommittees and as our new chair, if you're going to change the assignments, add the assignments, if you want to do that for next meeting or think about it tonight or how we want to handle that part of the process um, until otherwise I'll just keep being the chair of both those committees until. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask if you're all the committees. Uh, no, just two. <laughs> just two. <laughs> um, my thought to address that on subcommittees is to uh, take some time um, and bring up subcommittee assignments at the next possible. I am not quite clear if I can do that in between meetings or if I have to wait until the February meeting, um, but whatever is the next possible time that we could um, address that and assign folks to committees will do that. Member Hollins. Is it possible that um, before you make assignments, committee members might be able to tell you what com committees they think we might need? Because there, there's been some discussion that we might need, you know, task force advisory committees in areas where we haven't had them. Um, I think it is, it's not unusual for a chairperson to ask, you know, what two or three committees might you like to be on and then to know what some feedback is from the members, so. I think taking requests and preferences is uh, appropriate, totally appropriate and um, I, I plan to do that. Uh, and what in a kind of off the top of my head I think makes sense is to do assignments for the committees, subcommittees that already exist. And then in February, at our February meeting, we can have an agenda item about any additional subcommittees or task force that we want to have and address those at that time when we can um, be clear on uh, what the scope of the work is, as well as how many people we have to spread around to do the work. Okay, other subcommittees, you did policy and health and safety, other subcommittees and reports. Is there a budget subcommittee? Okay. No, but we voted to have one at, it'll be in I thought minute. I saw that in the minutes that I read, thank you. Okay. We voted to recommend to the chair or to the next committee that they consider forming the budget committee. We didn't vote to have a, sub a budget Thank subcommittee. Thank you. And any other, okay, I guess I already asked that. Any other, no other committee, subcommittee reports? We do have a personnel and uh, contracts, <coughs> essentially a subcommittee. Thank you. We haven't met because there hasn't necessarily been anything aside from Unit C and Unit A. Unit C is in uh, limbo, as we all know. Um, Unit A is still in negotiations. Adrienne was the chair for Unit A, or not chair, she was the committee rep for Unit A, so we do need to do, reassign that to someone. Could I ask again what the name of that committee is? I, did I miss something? Uh, it's usually it's called the Negotiations and, Subcommittee. Yes, it's Negotiations Personnel Subcommittee, something along those lines. Okay. Like, we haven't met. At least six months. Okay. 
Superintendent Harper, you look like you were going to say something well, about I was that. just going to note that the person assigned as the representative to negotiate may or may not need to be the chair of the subcommittee. So the um, particular role that's most urgently needed is a committee liaison to the Unit A negotiations. Um, and the committee may wish also to continue the standing subcommittee. So there's been a committee and then a representative to the negotiations. The negotiations are not necessarily a posted subcommittee meeting. Because Thank there's you. not a quorum of a subcommittee attending. Understood. Thank you. The next committee report says school committee representatives. Are those individual reports? Does anyone have an individual report they would like to give? So, uh, I don't have a report to give, but we do have a representative that attends the Collaborative for Education and is a member of the board. Um, and the last meeting that was held, I was in the school committee meeting, so I have nothing to say about that, but that is another position that we appoint. Thank you. Member Hollins. We also have a member who represents the school committee on the city's planning and construction committee. And I've had that role. You've had that role, correct, yes. Um, so that's another one. Uh, there's no new report, but I would like to say that at one of the last meetings, um, a comprehensive annual report of everything that planning and construction did for the year was written. And it's really very interesting how the school system fits into that. So I don't think we ever reviewed it. It was just passed out recently, but just mention that it's. I have that myself, but does every, did every school committee member get it? Oh, it, it sounds like it would make sense to have yes. it distributed to the school committee members again. Do we need a motion or anything? Can we just do that? Do. Yeah, can we just, yeah, I request that whoever is responsible for getting us reports could get us that. Is that you, Superintendent Harper? I see you writing it down. We can get that to the full committee, including new members. I believe members had it previously before the new committee members were elected. We have the good fortune of having someone on that committee, on this committee, so Gene Wall can certainly help you facilitate that. So am I understanding correctly that both Member Hollins and Member Wall were on planning, so the city planning and construction? I, was, a, a, I was appointed by the school committee to represent the school committee, but prior to being elected to the school committee, Jean Wall was the chair of that committee. Wonderful. <laughs> we, we've really scored when it comes to planning and construction, I see. I Are we planning it. any new construction? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other reports from representatives from school committee? Hearing none, we will move on in, back into the new business section of the agenda. Uh, the next item is the update on the Four Corners principal search. <clears throat> is that you, Superintendent Harper? It is, I'd like to provide an update. Um, the committee was informed um, perhaps the Friday before the vacation and uh, of the opportunity that the Four Corners principal had to advance his career goals and move into higher education. As a result, we launched a principal search on a very short timeline uh, and posted it either that same day or the next business day, uh, began recruiting candidates for the uh, position, uh, put together a team of parents, teachers, administrators, and community representatives. And I'm very pr proud to say that we did that work quickly because this is a role that's important to the community and that we want to have the input of teachers, parents, administrators, community members, special education representatives, and so forth. Um, we have held interviews this past Monday. We held a round of interviews. That was two days ago now. Um, and we, we had a strong pool of applicants and there's considerable interest in our schools and in our community, uh, and that's very heartening. Having said that, it has also um, been expressed to me by a number of people that the importance of this role is such that they really want to make sure that there's adequate time for the search and then it's done thoughtfully 
with um, the best possible start time to attract candidates that are invested in Greenfield and can remain in the Greenfield area. With that in mind and with the full support of the 12 members of the screening committee this past Monday, I have engaged in a search to uh, appoint an interim candidate while the search continues. And we are very fortunate to have uh, here in Greenfield a candidate who has been a teacher in our schools for a decade, who is licensed as a principal, and who has accepted my request to step into the role. So I'd like to share with you that I will be appointing Casey Putnam, who's a teacher at the Academy of Early Learning, into the role of interim principal. She'll be beginning this coming Monday. And she is eager to begin the work at Four Corners. She served as the, uh, the intern or administrative practicum student working at Four Corners previously. She has a master's degree in educational leadership and a bachelor's degree in education. And I think she would do an excellent job. And this allows us to continue our search while bringing some um, clear leadership to the building and um, while also taking care, obviously, to fulfill the classroom responsibilities, we've been working with the principal, Tom King, at the Academy of Early Learning, and we expect notice to go out to the families of her classroom students uh, tomorrow. So I'd, I'd like you to uh, join me in congratulating Ms. Putnam. And uh, there's a second Ms. Putnam, which is our existing principal at Federal Street School, who will be serving in a mentoring capacity and has agreed to continue to support her as she stepped in, steps into this role. So we'll have a Putnam team, and uh, we're really quite uh, pleased with this. And again, we did have terrific candidates applying and a lot of interest, and I really wish to thank uh, Ms. Putnam for stepping in so that we can uh, really bring a quick resolution to this idea of having a building principal there while we continue the search. Uh, member Wiedegartner. Uh, just a question. Is there a school committee representative on that search committee? There is. It's <laughs> Member Karen. <laughs> what, what a surprise. <laughs> Any other questions on that? Member Ekstrom. I'm sure I already know the answer, but we're going to send the letter to the people that we interviewed and say, thanks. In not out of the running, but for now, we're putting it on hold or something similar to that. In fact, it's very important to us that they uh, remain interested. And so uh, the, uh, the folks that were on the screening and interviewing committee have really been pressed into confidentiality so that those folks might, might well um, stay in the running with us through the search in the fall. Yes. Member Hollins. I'll try this. Chair Prieti, how do I do? It's pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Four Corners School is actually one of the first innovation schools in the state. And since we have a lot of new school committee members um, and maybe a new principal, would it be possible that we could um, share the innovation school plan that was uh, pr approved for the school by the school committee? Um, unless it's going to be disbanded as an innovation school. It's a school that has a specific goals and it can do things differently and it's all outlined in a pretty comprehensive plan. So maybe people aren't familiar with that. might be a good time to share it. I, I, actually, I think that's an excellent idea. Is that something that the superintendent's office keeps? You think that we could add that to our packet for February so we can go over that? Sure. Thank you for bringing it up. Any other comments about the Four Corners principal search? Okay, so we will move on to informing new members of progress on the superintendent evaluation. And who is it that will take that um, topic? Glenn, would you like to speak a little? Sure. Um, so uh, one of our duties as school committee is to do uh, evaluation of the superintendent. We do so um, in open deliberation, which ha happens by way of us filling out uh, the superintendent's evaluation. That information being compiled, kind of put into packets and in an open uh, public deliberation about the superintendent's performance. Um, before uh, she finished her tenure, uh, Chair Nunez uh, compiled the information um, and there are some um, there are some 
issues that are need to be resolved. Um, I, I, there was an email chain. There seemed to be a discrepancy between um, some information that was had in one place and some information in another. Um, there were concerns that some of the members' responses to some of the questions were either not appropriate or not actually responding to the questions on the evaluation form. Um, member Nunez, uh, or, or uh, Chair Nunez left that with me, uh, kind of assigning it to me at the end of her term, and I uh, wrote to the superintendent and said I thought that this would be an appropriate thing to bring to the newly designated chair um, to, and, and in my role as secretary, whatever I can do to help resolve the issues, I'm happy to do. Um, so that was going to be the next step was to share the, the email threads that I had about this with you and uh, set up a meeting with you to discuss if, if you would like. So, Sure, that sounds like an appropriate next step. Member Ekstrom. Just more as education for you, I actually was a person that compiled materials and comments the year prior to Adrian having done that, and so I, if there's some way I can help out, I'm happy to. I'm sure that there, was, there are likely discussions that Adrian and Glenn had that were, would mirror what we had. It's, a, it's, not an easy, mm -hmm. it's not an easy process, and it doesn't seem like it would be difficult, but it, but it is. So. Thank you for that. I definitely value the institutional knowledge and uh, would be happy to speak with you about what you... Um, I just want to be clear. I'm not saying you need me. I'm just saying. As I said, I, I value the institutional knowledge. Mayor Rita Gardner. Uh, that information should be available to the new members. At where will we find it? I um, forgot all about you. Um, that information is uh, should be available to us. Where can we get it? Where is it located? I think Member Johnson is indicating it's not yet compiled, so it hasn't been distributed. Oh, I, I, I misunderstood. It's, it's, it's in the betwixt and between as soon as it is, as it is compiled, then it will be available to the full committee and the public. Okay. I misunderstood. So that process has completed. It just has not been compiled. The evaluation forms were filled out. Yeah. The data was, has not finished being compiled, or there are some discrepancies in the compilation that need to be addressed. And then um, there may be some other issues that need to be taken into account, given the comments that certain members made on some of their forms, whether that we may need to pull in some outside assistance in determining what, if any, of what of those comments may need to be redacted given the public nature of the evaluation forms and given the the appropriateness of some of the comments and response to some of the questions at the same time not wanting to at all censor people's comments. So it's a tricky issue that I think will we'll take um, perhaps a little uh, assistance to sort out. Member Hollins. At one of our meetings or in, or in one of our correspondences, we were advised that the individual feedback from members was a public rec were public record documents, and it would be helpful to clarify that. Fair enough. That certainly warrants clarification. Any other comments about the superintendent evaluation? So for what I've heard here is that we need some assistance with the um, completing the compiling and that the chair will get with uh, Member Johnson on that and look to Member Ekstrom for historical perspective. And I would expect we'll have some progress on this for the February meeting. Member Hollins. I don't mean to talk too much, but it might be of interest for people to know that there's a new um, system for superintendent evaluation. I don't remember when it was uh, promoted in the state, but we're not using the new system. So how much time? It's just something to know that the system we're supposed to be using now isn't the one we're using, because when we started this, it was sort of in between the old system and the new system. Sure. But okay. you might, everyone might want to see the new system too. Okay. 
Member Johnson. We can ask for an update, but my understanding is they haven't fully rolled out the new system, and that's why we were using the old systems. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. The moment everyone has been waiting for, the next <laughs> item is the typical budget timeline. I'm certain it does not mirror the budget timeline we used for the last budget year. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. I just, I, I created this agenda in conjunction with Superintendent Harper, and I just thought it would be a nice quick, even for those of us who've been here before, just a quick for her to tell us, okay, these are the times I need to have things to the town, so that we just all are aware, the public is a little bit more aware, because it comes up fast, and we're like all a little bit like, oh, now we have to decide quickly, and we're not really ready yet, so. And uh, Superintendent Harper, are you going to take this one? I, I, I'm happy to comment on it in general, general terms. Because of the swearing in of new members in January, the budget process goes very fast. And essentially we have six weeks from today to build the superintendent's budget, post that into the newspaper, and then uh, for the school committee to deliberate on and ultimately vote on a budget um, happens after that February, right around February 13th, uh, we provide notice to the newspaper of public hearing and proceed from there with uh, deliberation on the budget. Um, we, the, the actual construction of the budget timeline comes from the city charter and we work backwards knowing the timeline uh, for the uh, mayor to have the budget book completed and that works backwards and then obviously the difference in the school department budget is that the full school committee has to vote on and provide public notice independently of the budget uh, well before it's entered into the mayor's budget book as a department would enter their budget individually without a prior vote. Um, so because of that, and, and generally because of the in extensive subcommittee work that takes place to make that happen, uh, the budget development time is a very time intensive process as it should be. Uh, and I expect that, that over the next six weeks, uh, all members will be heavily involved in that process, but particularly those that either are on a budget subcommittee, if that's, um, and I would recommend that there be a budget subcommittee at this point in time, given the amount of work that needs to take place on that. And the school department is well underway in this process in articulating the needs at the school level and at the district level. Thank you. Any comments on that? Member Ekstrom. I actually just have questions for the superintendent because I've been digging around because, you know, that's what I do. Uh, so I was looking at materials from the uh, state, and I just want to make sure that I'm clear on this just as I'm thinking about it. Chapter 70 is money that's given to us from the state. There is a district contribution, and essentially, we have to, when the district contribution isn't a recommendation, that's the state saying you have to spend at least this much. Yes? <clears throat> Go ahead, can I listen to the whole thing? No, that's it. Like, so I got other stuff, but if I'm wrong on what I think that is, then it won't matter. So I think you're talking about the required net school spending and the local contribution, which is yeah. a requirement. Yeah. And Greenfield has been at or above its, its required local contribution. And there's a level um, that's considered the adequate funding level, um, and it's established uh, by the Commonwealth, and then it's set for each district individually, um, and that's been determined. Um, of course, all of the work that's been done to reevaluate Chapter 70 is, is in part to address that because uh, there's been a concern that that net school spending has not actually, while it satisfies the requirement, has not ad actually been sufficient to provide a quality education. So that's been part of uh, the debate around the Chapter 70 and the right. state aid. So in short, yes, there's Chapter 70 state aid uh, that goes towards educational expenses. And then, of course, there's local tax dollars. Those two sources of funding combine together to meet the um, contributions that you're making to education. Yep. Um, to complicate matters, of course, we still have grant and revolving funds that we spend in addition to those. Member Wall. In, in looking at the budget that we got to look at for our first meeting, 
I see that a number of items are over 100% of expenditures, and I'm worried that we don't have enough money to finish the school year, and that we aren't working on that, and that we haven't even started on the budget for next year as a committee, and I don't see how we can get all of this done if we don't even have a committee until the next February meeting. Totally appropriate comments. I'm going to take comment from, it was it Member Karen, you had your hand up, please. Um, I was also thinking maybe we should, even if you take a five minute recess to think about or take to maybe create the budget subcommittee tonight. I don't know. It's something to think about or try to call a special meeting. Um, also difficult to have happen. But the other comment I wanted to make was that a couple of times as a committee, um, we've heard, well, we spend more than the required amount. And so I believe it was last year, um, the superintendent and the business manager provided us with a sheet that actually showed where in comparison to the schools around us above our we actually are, while we spend more than we're required to, we are spend less than most of the districts around us. And so I don't want people to think, well, they're spending too much money or hear that we're like exceeding our, what we should be doing when actually just that number is probably not accurate. The required spending is not an accurate number to provide all of the students in our district with everything they are in, entitled and should get. Thank you. I would take a motion to uh, create a budget subcommittee. So moved. Second. I have a, a motion from Member Wiedegartner with a second from Member Wall. How about discussion about that? Superintendent Harper. I, I really applaud the intent of this. I hear that we need to get to work and I recommend that a special meeting be held to address subcommittee assignments. My concern is that the posting does not list subcommittee assignments. Um, so action taken to create subcommittees are not actually Thank on you. the posted agenda and might be a problem with open meeting law. Thank you. So a friendly amendment to the motion would be considered to create a a uh, special meet to have a special meeting for subcommittee assignments. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. That's a motion by Mayor Wiedegartner and a second by Member Karen. Any discussion of that? Member Hollins. Well, I was concerned that our agenda did not say um, all anticipated items. Uh, there may be other items that come up that weren't anticipated, but we do have other business under number five, and um, I, I think it's hard to find times when everybody can come to other meetings, so I support um, tentative appointment that's affirmed at the next scheduled meeting, but I think if it, is, it isn't always easy to be able to get everybody for another meeting. Uh, Member Ekstrom and then Superintendent Harper. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think. Madam I, Mayor. Yeah, I think I had my hand up shortly after Susan. Um, on my calendar, uh, at my other place of business, um, I see a special meeting of the school committee for next week. It, I assume that's. Is, I don't know how it got there. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to assume anything. <laughs> no, I can speak to that. We, uh, yeah. We passed, I guess it was three months. We would have two meetings. We would have right. We meeting the second Wednesday, and then the following third month. We've been doing the second Monday. Wednesday. I suspected that that was what it was. Yeah. Been doing the two meetings, yeah. But I, I don't know what day. It's the 13th or the, uh, the 14th? Hold on. I could look in my phone, but I don't have it with that. Oh, the 20th. Started, it is actually 20th is actually, but the 13th, we've always done the Monday following the second Wednesday. Yeah. It's always been that way. So. Which would be the 13th? I think that's the way it is in the calendar, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I don't. I, I, it's been the second Wednesday and the third Wednesday. Oh, dear. <laughs> and this month was on the third Wednesday as far as the 15th Yeah. So, um. I'm just saying, I, I, that was a question more than anything. It's not a recommendation. But, Understood. Um, 
So. But if it's already on the calendar, it seems like we should take advantage of it. That's posted for the 20th, or? I hope it's not posted for the 20th, because that is a state ho a federal holiday. Right. Yeah. I did you see it posted on the town website or the school website? It, it wasn't a website. It was just I have a, I have a calendar. I had put on my calendar those 15. dates through the end of 2019, so I don't have them on my calendar going forward. Yeah. Sort of for this kind of stuff. Just for a point of information, if the committee is interested in holding a special meeting and that were posted tomorrow, Monday is pretty much the soonest that we could call a special meeting without it being an emergency meeting, allowing the time for proper notice. Mm -hmm. So if the committee is interested in holding it, some members have it on their calendars, others do not. Um, but it certainly could be held if a quorum was available to attend. If we held that on Monday, uh, that would be pretty much the soonest with 48 hours required by law. Mm -hmm. I want to do a quick poll for quorum, if there would be a quorum Monday. Sure. So if we were to have a meeting on the evening of Monday, January 13th, with a start time of 6.30, who would be able to attend? And that would give us a quorum, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I could call in, but I won't be in the state. Can you call? I, I yeah. No, we can't hear you. Don't be my gun. Can try to resolve a, a conflict, but I'm not sure. I could call in. I think it's really important that it's subcommittees. Mm -hmm. I I think the timeline is is tight enough that it warrants that we attempt to create the subcommittees as soon as possible as soon as possible appears to be Monday, January 13th, and we would have a quorum at that time. Superintendent Harper. Uh, we do have remote participation enabled to help those that wouldn't otherwise be able to attend. And I did know earlier there was an interest from Member Hollins to submit interest in particular subcommittees that individual members may have particular skill or experience with. Uh, so this may give the chair time, but I, I would encourage members to s submit that immediately after tonight's meeting so that yes, could please. be considered. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it'll be 6.30 on Monday. So the, um, the, do we need a motion? Do we need to, no? All right, so we will have, it's confirmed, we will have a meeting, a special meeting. Uh, the agenda item will be to address subcommittee assignments. We have confirmed we will have quorum Monday, January 13th at 6.30. For the benefit of the new members um, who have to submit their interest in subcommittees, could we have a quick list of what your standing committees are? That might be an excellent idea so that you know what you're actually requesting. Is that what you're saying? That sounds so anti-government, though. Yeah, well, I, I didn't to want actually us to know come up with, about. With, with some of us submitting bizarre names. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, so, as chair, I will attempt to do that, and I would ask that uh, the other members be kind, uh, as this is my debut, and if I'm missing anything, they will jump in. We've talked about subcommittees, including policy, health and safety, negotiations, also known as personnel slash contracts, uh, We've also discussed a budget subcommittee. And then there were two people who indicated they were representatives elsewhere to planning and construction and to collaborative for education. I don't know if that counts as subcommittees. Is there anything that I've missed? Superintendent, or I'm sorry, Member Hollins. Um, the title of one of our committees was policy and program. There Depending on the year, there has been, you know, a curriculum committee, so policy and program is sort of lumped together. But I want to say for the meeting, there's two policies we should share. We have a policy on subcommittees, and we have a policy on advisory committees. And it talks about um, what's the difference. But the interesting thing about the policy on subcommittees, and it's been this way for a long time and not corrected, in the policy on subcommittees it says, the school, Greenfield School Committee will have the following standing subcommittees. And then whenever it was written, they were left out. 
So we have a policy that doesn't cite our standing committees, <laughs> but those are the four that have been standing committees. Do, do we have a governance subcommittee? Because I, I would think that something like that would be addressed by a subcommittee for governance to address changes like that. What do you mean by that? Um, in, in my past experience with bodies like this, when you have, um, you know, in our case we have a charter, uh, but we would have bylaws and we would have rules of procedure um, and we would policy. do. We um, have about 400 policies. That's generally how school systems work. Sure. It's a book like this. Sure. Well, I work in financial aid. I'm familiar with policies. <laughs> yes. Um, but rather than, uh, my, my point is that perhaps there would be one or two members of the school committee that would be responsible for reviewing something like that when it comes up and making suggestions to the larger body of how to address it. That's always been the policy subcommittee. Yeah. I mean, that's my experience. So you're not asking that it be separate. You're asking for this subcommittee policy that is blank to be addressed by the policy and bringing, program committee. I'm just bringing to your attention there are two policies pertinent to your discussion at the special meeting, the policy and subcommittees and the policy on advisory committees. And I'm just letting you know that the current policy on subcommittees doesn't actually list what they I are. I see. So I see. That's all. I'm not asking for anything. Okay. I see. Um, I don't know whose hand was up first, so you all can fight it out. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Uh, I guess I guess it's down again. Uh, I was just going to say that while our current policy may not list the subcommittees, we are actively changing our policies in policy subcommittee right now. We've mm -hmm. taken on working with MASC, and I can't remember off the top of the head, but we just had the first reading of those policies, and I believe we addressed that problem. We just haven't gotten through to a second reading. We've been Fantastic. trying to get through the first reading since July. For, okay. for information, MASC is the Massachusetts Association of School Committees for people at home who may not know. Thank you. Member Ekstrom, did you have your hand up? I do. Uh, Mayor Rita Gardner. <laughs> Just to confuse things, and I don't know, perhaps you all through superintendent, those of you who have been here, uh, we created the library building, subcommittee, library building committee, and on that is a um, school committee designee a school committee member designated by the current, whoever the current chairperson is, happens to you, be you, Priety. That was good. Good. Thank I give you. you an eight out of 10. Okay, okay. Um, so so just so, so, you know, you're there is in, a, in an advisory capacity. So that would include in our list of representatives, right. a representative to the library building committee. Yeah, and it's temporary. Well, who knows? <laughs> It's temporary, as in temporary has a very funny yes, definition yeah, in the right. city it's, of Greenfield, doesn't it? It's not. It's it? not. It's not forever. Let me put it that way. <laughs> there will be a library someday. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Rita Gardner. Yeah. So I will add that to the list for discussion at the uh, special meeting on Monday. Okay. Any other comments about our special meeting and the committees? We feel those are accurately re reflected. We. We have, uh, what is your t title, Susan? I'm the recording secretary. From the recording secretary, we have a point of clarification. To clarify, it's health, safety, and facilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Super helpful. Anything else? I need to write down recording secretary so I don't forget <laughs> that. Okay. We are moving on. Um, if maybe we're not moving on, have we totally addressed the typical budget timeline topic? Is there anything else we need to add there? Member Hollins. When, when do we have to have our budget to the city? And when do we have to have our budget in the newspaper? The well, in the newspaper was uh, February 13th. And and will there be an expectation that the school committee will see the school district budget before it goes in the newspaper? Superintendent Harper. 
Um, so what I was asked to comment on for tonight is just the general process, which I've done here. But what needs to happen next is a specific alignment of calendars working with the city. And I think when the budget and finance subcommittee is appointed, their first order of business needs to be to address the specific timeline that the committee is working under, coordinate with the city and so forth. So I would ask that we not engage in that business tonight because we simply don't have all the information available and that that be the first thing that they take on um, as it typically is. Thank you. Anything else for the budget timeline? Okay, so the uh, item E, proposed tuition adjustments at Academy of Early Learning for the 2021 academic year. Is that you, Superintendent? Yes, yeah, so this, um, this item is here because we try to give families timely notice of any tuition changes. Um, having said that, I sent out to the, a note to the committee earlier this evening indicating that I would ask this item to be held until February. And the reason for that being that our business manager is ill today and couldn't be here to present. And because he's still doing some study of the uh, tuition rates that we would like to recommend, there has not been a rate adjustment at the Academy of Early Learning for, I believe, three years now. And so we do need to make a, a modest uh, adjustment to that. And I would ask that this committee consider those rates uh, in the February meeting. Could be Monday, but I would recommend at the next regular meeting would be fine. Uh, so families can begin planning ahead. Any comment on that? Thank you, Superintendent Harper. So we're, oh, I'm sorry, Member Ekstrom. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. <laughs> It's important to have validation. I appreciate that. <laughs> other business. Uh, we do have an item for other business. Is there other business before the school committee tonight? Okay. I think a motion to adjourn might be the next order of business. Do we have a uh, member Hollins? This isn't a motion to adjourn. I'm responding to your prior request for comment. Comment on? Other business. Other business. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, two things. One is uh, tonight's agenda is irregular. I'm not complaining. But generally, over the listing of topics, it says topics anticipated to be discussed. And then at the bottom of the agenda, it says there may be something discussed that wasn't anticipated. So I went through the last six months of agendas, and every single one had that. Right, honest. and my understanding that is that there was uh, not a, a person okay. to do the work this time, so okay. it's understandable that there might be a discrepancy. Yes, I, I, was, I was just asking that beyond the future agendas format. And the other thing is um, I was reading the policy that's here about the uh, chairperson role, which is interesting to me, but it says that the chairperson has certain duties and then carries out the will of the body. And it's been a concern of mine that our agenda doesn't say topics for the next agenda, so there's never an opportunity for the members to say Gee, I'm really interested in tablecloths, and people could say, no, we're not interested in that. But the practice I recall is that if someone had an agenda interest, that individual would send their individual interest to the chair, and the body would never know necessarily what anyone else suggested. So I'd like to ask if you would consider our agenda saying topics for the next meeting so that there was a chance for anyone to say what interested them. That's my thought, how the okay. topics get on the agenda. Because okay. it should be the will of the committee what's on our business agenda, in a way. Gosh, I, it, just to interject before I call on folks who have their names, I, uh, uh, who have their hands up, I would expect that it would be the will of the um, uh, citizens of Greenfield what's on our agenda, and not just the body. Yeah, but it wouldn't, my point is it isn't just the chair, I'm not picking on you, I'm just saying the, the chair doesn't direct the school committee, kind of. It's the... Understood, you know understood. What I'm trying to say, yeah. I, I saw Superintendent Harper's hand first. Um, I have a comment, but I saw Member Karen's hair, hand go up, so I'll, I'll wait until after her comment. 
Um, I was just going to say that this conversation has come up a lot of times and different chairs have handled it different ways. We did before we got really bogged down with a lot of really difficult work this fall, um, have a practice where at the end of the meeting it would say uh, agenda ideas and someone could present an idea to us and then if people were interested in that idea it would be moved to someone would say I move to add to the next agenda, someone would second it, and then we would vote. It does get lengthy if someone comes up with 15 ideas at each meeting, but it did make everybody aware of what other people are interested in, so it was a good way to practice, but it does seem clear to me that that's the chair's uh, purview to decide how they want to handle that. Sure, thank you. Um, do you have an objection to me calling on Member Johnson first? Member Johnson. Um, I think in, if the agenda had said items that could not reasonably have been anticipated to be deliberated upon, probably this topic would not fall into that category. This is something that we could put on a future agenda and discuss and deliberate on together, or we can share our thoughts with you individually, but I don't think it's an appropriate topic for school committee deliberation tonight since the public wasn't made aware of it in advance. Thank you. Superintendent Harper. I'd just like to clarify for the record the current um, policy of this committee, which was reviewed and adopted in 2016. It, it's governed um, in our policy manual. It's policy BEDB. Um, and it says any school committee member, staff member, or citizen may suggest items of business. The inclusion of such items, however, will be at the discretion of the chairperson of the committee. Thank you. Mayor Rita Gartner. Uh, Susan Hollins brought up uh, this under other business, so I, I think it's appropriate to discuss it. Um, and I don't think she's wrong in that wanting that opportunity at meetings. Um, it's fairly common and it's a fairly good way to proceed so that everybody has an opportunity to, to and I think as this committee will gel, we'll, we should be able to understand what each other wants to discuss. So I don't think it's a bad thing to have that as part of the agenda. Um, and I recognize fully that it is ultimately up to the chair. So putting the ideas out there, having that as a discussion is a, is a way for all members to participate. But at the end of the day, it is your role as chairperson to decide when any one of those items that are brought forward can be on the agenda. So that would be my, just my feeling. You know, you, sure. you're, you're free to decide how you want to Thank do it. Thank you for that comment. Well, and, and just to give folks a sense of how I typically operate and how I plan to operate is that um, one of my largest priorities, as I indicated at the beginning of the meeting, is to make sure that uh, folks who are interested in our deliberations and our business feel that this body is accessible to them, and that will include prioritizing agenda items, and when something is not of a high priority, it may be pushed to another meeting to another month, um, so that we are not sitting here until midnight on a regular basis, um, and I plan to exercise that as freely as I possibly can just to make sure uh, that we have um, digestible information at meetings and length of meetings. Member Hollins. Uh, last comment. There were three or four times we discussed this, plus we had a whole special meeting on trying to develop an annual calendar of what things had to come up on what month. Like, we know we have to get in. I can't think of it now. But at one of our recent meetings, I asked uh, that that be distributed. We never finalized it. But there was a lot of time put into we need to get this in on the February and we need to get this on June. That may be really helpful to look at for you. So you're, you're talking about creating a document, a tool for uh, from year, year over year being able to identify when things happen, the which I think is the it critical makes sense. issues that sure. the committee has to do to meet its responsibilities. Yeah. Sure. Thank we you. We have for some that. kind of draft document on that. Sure. Mayor Weta Gardner. Veering a little bit off, well, it's not off topic. I just wanted to, Member Hollins um, brought this up, I think, 
maybe she didn't mention it, but I noticed the absence thereof, as long as we're talking about creation of the agenda. Typically, um, agendas for different uh, committees in town um, always have mostly to cover themselves because you never know what's going on and going to happen during a session. Um, have a notation at the bottom that simply says an executive session may be called. Um, and I think that um, as a matter of practice, um, it would be a good idea for our agendas to always say that. It's, it doesn't have, because it's on the agenda does not mean it has to happen. So. Uh, Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Member Epstrom. Um, I think, <clears throat> Roxanne, you're absolutely correct. I think it's a wise decision to have it on every agenda, whether we do it or not, is whatever, whatever the situation is. I think this first agenda is just us getting our oh, collective totally everything that. together. Yeah. And I think a lot of these questions, because like we're all really interested, and I think a lot of these questions we'll probably get more into on Monday night, just because when we're, we're hashing through subcommittees and things like that, all of this little nitty-gritty will, will take care of itself. I'm excited, too. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Harper. Sure. I know there was an email from Member Hollins on this on Tuesday, January 7th at 11.04 a.m. that went to a quorum of the committee. So I do want to ask that members refrain from deliberating on topics you intend to bring up in a public meeting online um, so that we can adhere to the open meeting law. Thank you. Yes, it was addressed to Susan Ekstrom, Katie Karen, the mayor, and it was sent by Susan Hollins. So that's four out of seven members is a member of the committee. Well, one person sent it and three people received it. So that's four. Thank you. Just one final, I would, I would like to once again acknowledge uh, Member Karen and Member Harper for uh, making their best attempt at uh, putting together the agenda for this meeting this evening without having all of our um, officers in place, so thank you for doing that. And any other business before we adjourn? Is this like a record before we adjourn? I take a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Meeting is adjourned at 7.50 p.m. Yeah!